Gentlemen, Director, I have asked for your presence this morning because I'm afraid I have some terrible news for you. Terrible news? For us? Yes, I have found out quite by chance that a government official was on his way here from Moscow. He is on a secret mission to inspect our town and he is traveling in disguise. From Moscow to our town? On a secret mission? In disguise? Yes, I'm what? just as worried as you are. Here, let me read you a part of a letter I've had from Tesikov. You all know Tesikov. Oh. <laughs> My dearest friend, to whom we are all so deeply indebted, etc. <coughs> Uh, here we are. I must warn you that a very important government official has been asked to inspect the whole county, concentrating in particular on our town. I've had this from a completely reliable source. I know what you've been up to, like the rest of us. You've been picking up a few extra mouthfuls wherever you can. Oh well, we're all in this together. I think you ought to do a quick bit of covering up. He may be with you at any minute. If he isn't already, my cousin may... Oh, the rest is, is just personal knowledge. This is extraordinary. But why does the government expect it of us? Our modest town is a hundred miles away from Moscow. What do we hear matter to them all the way up there? Oh, every town gets inspected from time to time, I imagine. Our turn has come. We're just unlucky. No, no, no. Russia's going to war. That's what it is. They're looking for spies and traitors. We're much too far from the frontier for that. The authorities just want to know what's going on. Never miss a trick, Moscow. They put us right where they want us. Hush. Quiet. The government inspector may be listening even now. And you know what we'll all get if he sends Moscow an unfavourable report on any of us. We'll be sent to Siberia. Our gosh, we'll be made to work in those terrible salt mines. 16 hours a day, 7 days a week. And if we stop, even for a minute. We'll be whipped. Heads down, bottoms up. Hand of lashes to start with, and more to look forward to the next day. If we don't want this to happen, we must take action immediately. I've already alerted the police, told them to start patrolling the town, make sure that everyone's behaving themselves. If you'll take my advice, you'll smarten up your departments. The workhouse, for instance, and the hospital. Those two institutions are a municipal disgrace. The bedclothes are filthy, the patients are filthier still. Can't you get them <laughs> cleaned up a little? I'll do the best I can by the nightcaps, nothing else. Make it look as if someone actually cares about the poor folk. Put their names above their beds. Names? Get the doctor to tell you what diseases they're suffering from. Diseases? Cut down on their drinking. Their drinking? Cut down on their smoking. Smoking? Cut down on the number of patients if you can. If the inspector sees the ward as it is, he'll think the doctor's incompetent. Incompetent? He's a splendid chap. He doesn't speak a word of Russian. But he doesn't go throwing around serious money like our last doctor did. <sighs> and our magistrate's court is a, is a pigsty. Geese and chickens running around all over the place, and the smell of it turns my stomach inside out. I'll have them slaughtered straight away. <laughs> Would you like to have dinner with me tonight? <laughs> At your magistrate's office is a train wreck. Guns, whips, and pelts lying all over the place from all that hunting you've been doing. Couldn't you get it cleaned away a little, at least until the inspector's gone? And your clerk. He may be a clever fellow, but he stinks of spirits. If he really does smell like that naturally, as you claim, can't you make him uh, eat onions or something until the inspection is over? If the inspector gets a whiff of him as he is, it'll be the salt mines for the lot of us. Alas, he's been like that ever since he was a child. His nurse hit him, he says. He's been smelling like a distillery ever since. <laughs> Nothing can be done. At least you can do something about the way you run your court. What's wrong with the way I run my court? The little extra mouthfuls you've been picking up? That's what Tesikov calls your little peculiarities in his letter here. My little peculiarities, I like that. Well, I take the odd present from time to time. The odd hound, or two, or three. Who doesn't take presents around here? It's the only way any of us can get anything done. At least I don't stoop so low as to sell myself a money as you do. Biggest bribe taker in the town you are. Oh, Not all over the district. Quiet, the government inspector. At least I go to church every Sunday, which is more than I can say for the three of you. Our schools, Mr. Superintendent, are no better than our courts. It's your job to keep an eye on the teachers, you know. They may be well-educated men, I grant you that. But don't they behave in the most extraordinary way? There's one of them who's always making faces at people. <laughs> if he makes faces like that... When the inspector's here, it'll be Siberia for all of us. Well, what do you want me to do about it? I mean, I had a word to him when the prince came last year. 
The man pulled the most appalling faces that you ever saw. <laughs> and I, I was nearly arrested for introducing revolutionary ideas into the syllabus. I can't stand clever men. None of them's quite ordinary, it seems to me. They're all alcoholics, or crazy, or peculiar. Yeah, well, look, I agree, I agree. I can't stand clever men either. You never know what they're going to say next. We could put up with one or two of them, I suppose, but it's this clever fellow from Moscow that's giving me the shivers. Any minute now, he may burst in through that door and say, I've been looking for you, my beauties. Which is the mayor? You're under arrest. Which is the magistrate? Prison for you. Which is the director of social services and the superintendent of schools? Off to Siberia. Ah, gentlemen, what's this I hear? A government inspector coming from <laughs> Moscow to inspect us. Who's been talking then? Petra Bobsky popped from the post office a couple of minutes ago and told me all about it. Trust <laughs> Petra Bobsky to know everything. <laughs> well, what do you make of it then? War with the Turks. Sounds like a mole. See, I said Russia was going to war with the Turks. <laughs> uh, it's nothing to do with a war. This letter doesn't mention any war. The Turks aren't even mentioned. It's us who's going to be blown up right here in our little town. Scared, Mr. Postmaster? Scared? wouldn't say scared. Uh, disturbed, perhaps. What about you? Oh, I, I'm not scared. No, <laughs> not scared as such. I can't say I'm 100% happy about our tradespeople and shopkeepers, though. Mm. Drop me in the dirt, they will give half the chance. What have you done to put their backs up? Oh, nothing. Mm. Absolutely nothing. Mm. Every penny I've taken from them has been for the very best of reasons. <coughs> Give a friend a good turn, will you? It's the tradespeople that have complained to Moscow, I strongly suspect. Why else would Moscow send a government official down here at such short notice? And in disguise, too. Moscow wouldn't waste its time. Do you, uh, ever feel like opening letters? Opening letters? Oh, of course! Been opening them for years! <laughs> I also don't know what's been going on around here. <laughs> not that I'm actually spying on anyone. Not that I'm um, actually spying on anyone. <clears throat> you haven't uh, come across any letters uh, to Moscow with uh, complaints about me? Uh, anything about uh, protection money? Complaints and about you and protection money? Oh, no, I can't say I have. <laughs> well, what about any letters from Moscow? Uh, with anything about a, a government inspector coming to investigate, say, uh, Corruption? <laughs> no, I would recognise a letter like that, don't you worry. I've been opening some fascinating letters recently, though. Oh, you'd love to read them. This one last week, this army officer, what he's been up to with the ladies. You wouldn't believe the way he describes them. Oh, I'm uh, holding on to that one, you bitch, I am. Uh, which one? <coughs> like a look. Oh, not now. I'm not in the mood. It's the thought of this blasted government inspector from Moscow that's getting me down. And in disguise, too. Uh, but, uh, what? Forget my request, will you? Uh, if you do come across any letters with uh, complaints, accusations, ruminations, censor them. Don't hesitate one second. Trust me, you're a good mayor. Watch it, it isn't legal. You'll be running, interfering with the Imperial Mail. He won't get into trouble through any of us, though, will he? We're all in this together. Can't get away with those sort of antics for long. Oh, let him censor while there's a, uh, a state of emergency. Anything goes yes, in what? state of You'll never guess! Fires of heaven, sun is that. We were just popping into the pub for a quick one. Yes, I was just popping into the pub for a quick one with Petra Dobsky. Let me away. finish, Petra Bobsky. Don't interrupt. I'll tell the story better than you, or Petra Dobsky. Let me go from the news. The news, the news? Well, for pity's sake, stop arguing about it. Sit down and tell us. <laughs> I'll start from the beginning, and I won't forget one significant fact, I promise. I left you after you had received that letter from Teslikov, remember? Yes, yes. On my way. On your way, you met me. Oh, please don't interrupt. I say Petrodovsky quite puts me off. Now, where was I? Outside the pub. No, not yet. I went to see the postmaster first to give him the shocking news you had received about the inspector from Moscow. I met Petrodovsky after I came away from the post office. Near the pie and mash shop, I said to Petrodovsky, oh. have you by any chance heard about the news the mayor has received? She had heard about it, of course, all about it from your housekeeper who was out shopping. For brandy. For brandy. Oh, please don't interrupt, oh. Petrodovsky. So why don't you tell one or two people we both know? On the way, Petrodovsky said to me, let's pop into the pub, she said. I haven't had a bite since breakfast and my tummy is rumbling. They've just had some fresh salmon delivered, and I could do with a snack. When we were in the pub, we noticed a young man. A well set up young man, but not an official uniform. A well set up man, not an official uniform, but intelligent, obviously intelligent. 
Who's that? I said. Who's that good-looking stranger? Something told me there was more to him than met the eye. So we called the landlord over. He's just had another baby, by the way. His wife had. His <laughs> wife had. Oh, point. please don't interrupt, Petrodovsky. <laughs> Who's that young fellow? We asked the landlord, yes. keeping our voices down. That young man, the landlord replied, he's a civil servant. He lives and works in Moscow. He's on his way to his father's farm in the country. He came here about two weeks ago. He had no money, only a lot of fashionable Moscow style. He hasn't paid for anything, not a single penny. When I heard the landlord say that, I looked at Petrodovsky and winked my eye. Ah ha ha ha. I said ah ha ha first. We both said ah ha ha ha. We must have said it together. <laughs> what is that young man doing in our town? He's on his way to his father's farm in the country, is see. Why doesn't that young government official go to the country? Government official? He's the government inspector. You were warned about him in that letter. Oh, no, so it is Everything true. Everything points to him. He comes here and he stays. He pays no money while he looks about. Why does he pay nothing? He must be living on a government expense account. You were warned about him in that letter. You should have seen the way he looked at my salmon. He's even asleep <laughs> No. And what room is he staying in? Room number four, over the stables. Where the poor man hanged himself last year. And how long has he been there? More than two weeks. More than two weeks? He arrived on St. Basil's Day. Oh, more than a fortnight! Think of all we've been up to in the last two weeks. <laughs> the streets haven't been cleaned. The, the prisoners have had no food. We've flogged the sergeant's wife. And the townsfolk have been drunker than ever before. Well, Mr. Mayor, we must introduce ourselves to this inspector from Moscow, yes. must we not? Shall we two humble folk go together to make some out from the capital? No! <laughs> uh, no, I, I shall go alone. I've been in a few scrapes before, and I've always managed to get out of them, thank goodness. He's uh, quite a young man, you say? Very young. 23, 24 perhaps. No older than that. Excellent. Young men are so much easier to deal with. And now, gentlemen, director, if you will go and get your departments in some kind of order, I will uh, head over to the inn. Uh, Petra, you'll come with me. Uh, we'll show this visitor what sort of a welcome we give to travellers in this town. Chief Constable! So, go fetch a cab. Uh, no, no, no. Send someone else. Uh, you, you stay here. I need you here. I'm not straightening things out, generally. All very well for you. I haven't had a chance to get my court records in order for the past 15 oh. years. <laughs> Have we a cab ready? Yes, Your Worship. Okay, now, uh, go and fetch, uh, uh, no, um, why is the second constable not on duty? Uh, drunk, Your Worship. Oh, God, not again. <laughs> Blind drunk, Your Worship. Been pouring cold oh. water ever since breakfast time, not a bit of use. Oh, my goodness, oh, dear Lord. Oh, fetch me my coat, uh, fetch me my hat, fetch me my sword. Uh, uh, come on, Petrodovsky, are you ready? Let me come too. No room in the cab. I'm behind the cab, then don't want you to miss this. Oh. Hurry up, Chief Constable. Oh, no, look at the sword. Scratches all over it. Hasn't been cleaned in years. What will the inspector think? <coughs> and tell your men to uh, sweep their brushes and bring their streets. <laughs> Don't laugh at me. You know what I mean. And get this straight. Lay off the pilfering when there's a government inspector in town. I know what you've been sticking down your trouser leg when you think no one's looking. I'm not stupid. I have no idea what you're talking about. Man from Moscow's come. Government inspector, I warned you about him. What have you done about it? I've got men out on the streets sweeping, as many as I can spare. It's a big job with months of rubbish. With the second constable blind drunk, third time this week, I ought to have you shot for inefficiency. What are you uh, pulling down? Pulling down? All the best towns are pulling things down. It, it shows they're dynamic. Start pulling some things down immediately. <laughs> <laughs> and get this straight. If the inspector asks any of your men if they've got any complaints, they are to say, no complaints, Your Honour. We love our work, we do. If any one of them drops me in it, I'll give them something to complain about, I promise you that. <sighs> if we get out of this alive, I'll do something really great for our church too, I promise you that. Uh, come on, Petra Dotsky. <sighs> your worship. Oh, yes, I know, I know. And if I catch any of your men half naked in the street like usual, I'll... I'll uh, where have they all gone? What's happening? Anthony! Darling! Oh. oh, this is all your fault, hanging around, making yourself look attractive. <laughs> oh, Anthony! Where are you going? He's come already, has he? Who do I mean? The government inspector. Oh, what's he like? Is he tall? Is he good looking? Has he got long whiskers? Bye bye, my little honeybee! Bye bye! Oh, bye bye, my 
out of honeybee indeed. A fat lot that tells us. Oh, this is all your fault. Help me with my necklace, won't you? As if your looks matter. Fussing yourself just because there are men in the house. What makes you think they want to look at you anyway? They make faces when your back is turned. Cool down a bit, Mama. Your curiosity will be satisfied in a mere hour or two. An hour or two? <coughs> An hour or two? I want to know now. Anthony! Oh, at last he's out of earshot. <laughs> you there. Watch face. Go run after the mayor's carriage, won't you, and find out what he's like. Who do I mean? The mayor? No, fatties, I know what the mayor's like. He's my husband. <laughs> the government inspector. The mayor has gone to see the government inspector. Now, peep through the keyhole, anything, then come back and tell me if he's good looking and handsome. Off you go, hurry, run. <laughs> so famished before, not in the whole of my life, and we're stuck here in this miserable dump, with no money and no food. Two months since we left Moscow, we could have been back at the old man's place a long time ago if Master hadn't started throwing his money around like water. <laughs> Everywhere we stopped to change horses, he had to show off what a great city gentleman he is, or thinks he is. Book me the very best ho room in the very best hotel, Joseph. That's what he says always, even if there's only one bad little pub like this in the whole village. <laughs> Caviar, strawberries, sham wash it down with champagne. You'd think he was a grand duke the way he carries on, and he's only a junior clerk in the very lowest civil service grade. Of course, a fool like him gets stripped of his money. They think he's rich, and they take out the cards or the dice. Fancy a game, they say. And they carry on playing until they've cleaned him right out, for he lacks a brain. <laughs> the big city. Ha! All Russian push. But Moscow has a few theatres, and we dash around in cabs in Moscow, my master and I. And people know how to speak properly and know how to hold themselves. Here in this mouldy little hole in the country, there's <laughs> nothing to do but sleep and eat pies. If you can afford to eat pies, we can't afford to eat anything. <laughs> oh, why can't my master look after his money more carefully? When he gets a present from his old man, we behave as if we belong to the imperial court and we're rich. Next minute, we haven't got a bean, and I'm having to peddle my master's clothes to the nearest pawn shop to keep ourselves alive. Uh, if only his father knew how his, my master was carrying on, I'm sure the old chap would take his son's well-cut city trousers down <laughs> and thrash his backside so he couldn't <laughs> sit on the very best chair for a week. No, please, don't get up. Feel free to use my bed whenever you feel like a lie down. You'll keep the blankets warm and well aired, I'm sure. Now, in that jar, some tobacco. <laughs> tobacco? You must be joking. You smoked the last of the tobacco four days ago, don't you remember? Four days ago? Nonsense. Well, then, well, I... Hmm, we've got no tobacco left. We'll have to get some food. Get moving, Joseph. What exactly do you want me to do? I want you to go down to the kitchens and tell them I want some dinner. <laughs> dinner? <laughs> you must be joking. The landlord said you weren't getting another bite until you've paid all your bills. What? He can't do that. I've done nothing. Look, he's not going to get us any food. There'll be murder. It's against the law. He says he'll call the mayor. Two weeks you have been running up bills you had no intention of paying, he says. I don't want to go to prison, thank you very much. What? Nonsense. From, from a landlord in the country, go summon him. Go and fetch him yourself. Joseph. Very well, sir. <laughs> oh, 
what a horrible feeling being hungry is. I knew I shouldn't have gone out into the fresh air. It's just made me feel worse. Oh, what a fool I've been. I had enough money to see us to fathers. More than enough. If only I hadn't spent so much of it before the halfway mark. The terrible luck I've had with the cards and dice. I'd never known anything like it before. The way that wretched army officer cleaned me out in less than 15 minutes. If only I could have borrowed a few pounds back then. Oh, I could have turned the tables. Oh, I know I could have. But no one will lend you anything in this mean little town. What a rotten, dull lot they seem here. After the gay citizens of Moscow. Did you require anything, sir? Oh, good morning, my good friend. I trust you are in good health? Oh, very good health indeed, sir. I thank you. How's our hotel trade at present? Thriving, sir. Thank you. Many travellers need accommodation? Enough, sir. Thank you. Well, look here, my friend. No one has set me up any dinner yet. Could you do anything to hurry them up down on the kitchens? It's a rather urgent. <coughs> I have to go out. The landlord says you weren't to be served. He was going to get the mayor about you. Have you taken away? The mayor? He can't do that. I've done nothing. Look, I need food or I shall die. <laughs> Not one bite more until he has paid for what he has had already. That's what the boss said, and it's more than our jobs are worth to go against please his orders. Please, do your best to persuade him then, please. I'll see what I can do. I don't think I'll have much luck, but I'll try. Well, if he's not going to get us any food, what am I going to do? Pawn my best city clothes? I'm not going to resort to that. If I can avoid it, if I would never get them back. Just fancy arriving home in some drab suit run up by some cheap country tailor. How the old man would laugh. Ha! How his servants would snigger. Who's that? They would ask, pointing and laughing at Joseph. One of the master's grand Moscow friends? No, that would never do. How tragic it is to be so hungry. Well? We're going to let you have some dinner. Dinner hurrah! Dinner hurray! I thought a little city charm would do the trick. Oh, they let you have some food, but it's the very last time you'll be served, the landlord says. We'll argue about that later. Now, what have you brought me? Soup. And roast chicken. What? Only two courses. <laughs> More than you thought you'd get. <laughs> they use they, uh, oh, and, oh, what is this? I don't, I don't know why I've been expected to put up with such treatment. Go tell the landlord I must be properly fed. <laughs> the landlord was reluctant to give you this much. I had to talk him into it. And no sauce. We have no sauce. I saw the cooks making sauces. I came by the kitchens this morning, and there were two young ladies eating fresh salmon in the dining room. I saw them. Fresh salmon's for a better type of customer. A better type of <laughs> customer. <laughs> uh, a better class. <coughs> the sort who pays. How oh, <laughs> dare you! I'm not wasting my breath on people like you. And what kind of soup do you call this? Dishwater soup. It's got feathers in it, and straw, and... Hey, you! How awful it smells! Go fetch me some good soup at once. Very well, sir. The landlord said if this soup wasn't to your liking, you didn't need to force it down. Leave it, you fool! <laughs> this soup is better than no soup. Even if it is the very worst soup in the world. Uh, there you go, Joseph. I've left a little for you. Go fetch a spoon for yourself. Now, let's look at this chicken. What? You call that a roast chicken? What do you think it is? Looks more like a burnt sparrow to me. Thieves, <laughs> robbers, taking a man's money for rubbish like this. It's barely edible. And no sauce. And no pudding either. So I wait robbery treating travellers this way. The mayor's downstairs, he's asking questions about you. What? The rotten landlord has sent for him already? Take me to prison, will he? Oh, I won't go. Oh, I won't be arrested. <laughs> Who is this mayor? What right does he think he has to do this? I suppose he thinks I'm just some ordinary country bumpkin. 
Doesn't he know that I'm a gentleman and that I've come from Moscow? Oh, I shall resist him to the very last ounce of my strength. The impertinence. <coughs> May I have the honour of offering you on behalf of all our citizens uh, our warmest civic greetings. Uh, good afternoon. Good I afternoon. Uh, hope you will forgive me for intruding upon you in this manner. But uh, as principal authority of this town, it is part of my job to make sure that travellers are being well looked after. Very important persons, sir, must be given extra special care, as you would know better than any of us. I, I'm not guilty of anything. I'll pay for everything before I go. I swear it. The innkeeper had no right to complain. He sends up chickens and as tough as old boots. And the soup you would have thrown in your garden. Have a tea here. Tastes as if it's been made in a chamber pot. May I then? Why are you expected to put up with this miserable place? May I then offer you, uh, on behalf of the town, sir, our deepest regrets? And not that I had any personal responsibility in the matter, of course, but uh, our market is um, the best in the country, sir. I can swear to that. And our tradespeople are sober and uh, and honest, sir. I can mm-hmm. swear to that too. The landlord must have been getting his food from. Somewhere outside of the town. Uh, but, but, sir, if you're not uh, comfortable here, may I uh, suggest that we have you moved immediately to somewhere where you will be um, much better looked at? Oh, no, 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 no. You cannot do this to me. I'm a civil servant from Moscow. I'll go to the minister. We're ruined. He's been three weeks in this town already. He knows everything about us. <laughs> I'll tell them all about the dreadful place. Uh, uh, no, no, sir, uh, uh, don't do that, please. Please, dear Lord, uh, I have a wife, sir, and, and a child. I, I will never live this down, please. You uh, have a wife and child, you say. The spear of I need not go. Sir, I think, from the bottom of my heart, I stay here, as bad as it is. It's, it's only because I, I haven't been a country mayor that long, sir, and I don't get paid very much, as, as you well know, and I, I may have... I may have taken a few little bribes from the tradespeople, but uh, but how could I have kept body and soul together otherwise? And and if anyone tries to tell you we flogged the sergeant's wife, don't don't listen to them, <laughs> sir. I have a few enemies in this town. I mean, what mayor doesn't? And they're only too quick to slander me, given half the chance. So oh, you won't flog me, my friend. I promise you that. <laughs> but what are you telling me all of this? I'm not going to give you any kind of a bribe, big or small. Have the money. Oh, yes. Till then, I'll just have to stay here and whistle. That cunning fox, he's drying us out. Uh, sir, if you happen to be in some uh, temporary financial embarrassment, allow me to assist you. It's uh, part of my job, sir, to uh, help travellers in any way I can. Well, I... Uh you couldn't manage to spare me a small loan, perhaps, so that I could uh, repay the landlord what I owe him? Shall we say uh, 200 of the best? Or not as much as that, possibly? There's uh, 200 of the best there exactly, sir. Don't bother to count it. Ah, yes. I'm so very grateful I'll uh, repay you every penny as soon as I reach my father's estate. We are saved. He's taken the money. And there's 400 there, not 200. That makes us doubly secure. Joseph, go get the waiter. But uh, both of you, please, why are you standing? Please, sit down. Be at your ease. He's here in disguise, remember? We must pretend we don't know who he is. Uh, I was just out for a walk with uh, Petra Dobsky here, sir, um, just to check that things were running smoothly, and uh, we just happened to come by the inn to make sure all the travellers were being well looked after, and we just happened to hear about your good self, sir. What a turn up for the books. And what a lucky chance it has been for me, too. That is until you came on the scene. I had no idea about how I should ever pay my bill. It looked as if I should be here forever. A likely story. Uh, are you travelling far, sir? Yes, I'm on my way to my father's estate in Saratov County. Saratov County? He's a clever one, this one. 
Your good father, sir. Yes, he uh, doesn't think I'm doing quite as well now in Moscow as he would like to think. You see, he's a bit old-fashioned like that. He thinks one has only to join the civil service and work a week or two before being given an imperial decoration without any further ado. It isn't as easy as that in Moscow nowadays, as you may know. What a cool customer. So dry and yet so very convincing. <laughs> it, uh, it isn't as easy for country mayors either, sir, as you would well know. I work my fingers to the bone for this town, tossing sleepless in my bed <laughs> night after night. And what reward or recognition do I get from Moscow for my efforts? This, uh, this isn't a very pleasant room. It, it smells damp. It is damp. <laughs> and it's filthy. It's a festival of bugs. Oh. Bugs? Mm, hungriest bugs you ever saw. Oh. Strings of them hang down from the ceiling at night. And the room's so dark. It is dark. Can't read, can't write, and the landlord hasn't been given me any candles. Really? That such a distinguished gentleman would... Oh! But, but, but sir, uh, <laughs> I would be greatly honoured if... Uh, if uh, Oh, but no, I'm entirely unworthy. If you would, uh, if you would... Uh, if I would what? If you would come and stay at my house, for as long as you like. I have a, a very nice spare room. It is warm, clean, and, and well lit. Uh, but, but, but no, I'm, I'm taking entirely too much upon myself to, to think that, that you would enter so, so humble a dwelling... Uh, Bugs or not. And that's where you go wrong, my friend. I would love to come and stay in a private family home once more. Nothing could be worse than staying in this dreadful inn. Oh, splendid. And, and my wife, sir. Oh, she will look after you. She would love to have you come and stay. Oh, how that woman will look after you. And I will repay her kindness, I can assure you. A hundredfold. You wanted your bill, sir. But I gave you your bill this morning. Well, it's probably about somewhere. Can't really be bothered looking for it right now. Um, tell me, to save time, how much do I owe you all to Very get? important persons are not to be plagued by paperwork in this town. Bunk off, you fool. We'll send you the money directly. <laughs> oh, that was very kind of you, sir. And now, sir, allow me to show you some of the more important buildings and services of this town. I'd be delighted to. Everything is ticking over like clockwork. You will see for yourself. I'd be so pleased. From here, shall we pass to uh, our local school and you'll see the excellent way in which our children are taught. Oh, joy. And then uh, to the uh, police station or the magistrate's court where we deal with our naughty folk. <laughs> well, I'm uh, not so certain about that. Uh, the, uh, the asylum, perhaps? Uh, the workhouse? Oh, what a splendid tour we are going to have. Shall we... Uh, Ride in your carriage, or, or should we get a cab? A cab would suit very well. As uh, there will be no room in the cab, Petra, uh, you had best run ahead to the hospital and, and inform the director. And then uh, take a note to my wife, and... Uh, uh, so you don't mind if I uh, scribble a note to my good lady, do you? You know how our wives like to be kept abreast of the comings and goings of our very important guests. Ah, uh, yes, <coughs> we have ink here, but um, no paper... Oh, yes, for some a bill in my pocket. Use for back of this. Splendid, splendid. Thank you. First, uh, we'll ply him with vodka. And, uh, and then we'll get out some of our home-distilled Scotch whiskey. That stuff tastes terrible, but it would make a raging bull tranquil. Ah! Oh, good, good grief. Sorry about that. <laughs> Aren't you hurt? No, sir, no, sir. I'm hurt at all, sir. I promise you that. I wouldn't feel for another though, sir. My nose feels slightly broken, that's all. I'll just nip off to my chemist. He'll give me a pass or something to put on it. Don't bother yourself about Our me, chemist, sir. sir, has remedies that cure everything. Best chemist in the land. I wouldn't worry yourself about her. And now, uh, shall we go? Uh, your servant can take the bags ahead to, to the mayor's house, my good man. Uh, anyone in town will show you where it is. Uh, after you, sir. After you. You miserable little worm. You could have ruined everything. You could have had us all sent to Siberia. Lucky for you at least one of us has some brains. <laughs> Been 
you waiting just because of you? Oh, fussing about the way you look all the time as if your looks matter. <laughs> the whole street is empty. Our town's gone dead. Stop worrying, Mama. You'll hear all about it in a moment or two. There. What did I tell you? There's someone coming our way. Oh, let me see. Who is it? Oh, let me see. Oh, yes, I see a woman in the yellow skirt running towards us as fast as she can. Who is it? It's Petrodotsky, Mama. It's not Petrodotsky. What nonsense you talk. You only say that to annoy me. Oh, I see. It is Petrodovsky. <laughs> oh, what's he like, Petrodovsky? What kind of man is he? Oh, what a stupid person Petrodovsky is. Why can't she yell up and tell me what he's like? Now I have to wait until she gets here. Woo. Tell me, tell me, what's he like? To talk. Talk? Uh, yes. Yes, uh, and? He carries himself well. And? Uh, a gentle and every inch of him. Oh, I can't wait to see. He likes reading, likes writing. And, and there's a touch of red in his hair. Oh, red in the hair. Oh, that shows an active mind. Now, are you sure he is the government inspector my husband was warned about in the letter? Inspector? Sure? Well, who else would dare to get angry with the mayor? He nearly sent your husband to prison. He did what? For letting me in in such a dreadful state that your husband stood up to him. My husband stood up to him? And now they've gone off together to inspect the hospital. As if they'd been the best of friends for hundreds of years. Oh, but here's a note from your husband. Oh, let me see. He really had it in for me, my sweetheart, but I put forward my cucumber, two pounds of pickled cabbage, and a string of best pork sausages. Put on first to see. Oh, I see. He's written it on the back of a bill, typical. Ah, get our best spare room ready, for we are to host a very important guest. Don't bother about dinner, we're having a bite to eat at the hospital, but send out for plenty of the very choicest wine, my pet, and I'll be with you very soon. Your loving Anthony. Oh, how exciting there's so much to do. Wine to be bought, soap and water in our best room, and... Oh, then what shall I wear? I'll leave you now, if I may. The hospital. See what's happening. Oh, as you please, as you please. Ooh, I think, I think I'll wear my pink dress with the white lace. Uh, no need for you to dress up. You're fine as you are. Oh, pink suits me so well. Makes me look like a boy with baby, Mama. Pink suits people with dark eyes, better, Mama. I have dark eyes. What nonsense you talk. Dark and mysterious. <laughs> Now, come on, child, we have plenty to do before the government inspector gets here. <laughs> Anyone in? Anyone in this place? Ah. Oh, Highness, where do you want me to put this? Is it for the general? Uh, no, it's for my master. Isn't your master a general, then? He gave up being a general a long time ago. He's much more important now. Oh, that must be why they're all so excited. Here, yeah, I'll give you a hand. And I would like a bit, some food and drink, please. Whatever you've got ready, I'm not fussy as long as there's plenty of it. Oh, good place, that. And yes. damn's kind of you to show me round mm. too. First time I've ever been treated like that in the country. Oh well, we all try to do our jobs properly around here, sir. Not like in some of those other towns where the officials are far too busy lining their own pockets. We're not like that round here. Uh, let me get you some more wine. It was a very delightful meal. Do they serve meals like that at the hospital every day? Well, it may have been just a little better than normal, sir, on account of our very important guest. We are... Uh, we were of a hospital, were we not? I uh, did not see many patients. Oh, we don't have many patients, sir. Not in our hospital. It's so well managed. We do have a few sick people come here from time to time. But with our famous no medicine treatment, the poor sick people start feeling better as soon as they arrive. <laughs> mine <laughs> uh, Of all the work done in this town, sir, mine is surely the most worrying. I am responsible for keeping the town clean, for keeping law and order, for keeping the municipal convicts under lock and key for keeping, keeping the townsfolk from getting drunk. Uh, pray, have more wine, sir. And, uh, and what do I get for all this worry? Do I get titles? No. Awards? No. Headaches? Yes. Ulcers? Yes. 
But I know, sir, that I'm doing a damn fine job for my country, and that makes it all worthwhile. Smug pig. I'll get him for this. I do am like that. My thoughts, my ideals, how can I put them into words? Sometimes I may coin a patriotic jingle. Sometimes I toss off a little poem or two. What a brain the man must have. I wish I could produce poems like that. Tell me, though, do you spend all your time working hard around here? Don't you ever want to enjoy yourselves? Don't you ever have a game of cards or dice? Here come the leading questions. <coughs> cards, sir? Dice? We're all far too busy working in the government service for that. Very relaxing at times, cards can be. <coughs> oh, oh, he- hello, hello, what's this? What's this? May I have the honour of introducing uh, my wife Anna and my daughter Maria? The pleasure is all mine, I can assure you. When we have such an honoured guest in our wholly inadequate house. No, it is I who am honoured. Oh, won't your highness sit down? You insist, ma'am. The pleasure it would give me to sit next to you. The pleasure is mutual, I'm sure. Oh, life in a small country town must seem exceedingly dull to your excellency compared to all the excitements you're accustomed to in Moscow. I'm boring, ma'am. Boring, of course. Except for when one has an experience like this. This, I can assure you, makes up for everything. Oh, we are so countrified here. With your grand Moscow ladies, we cannot hope to compare. Ah, uh, yes. The grand Moscow ladies. Yes, the glorious Moscow ladies. But no, the country is not Moscow. The ladies here. Glorious, glamorous Moscow. You think I'm only but a humble first grade civil service clerk from Moscow, don't you? Well, you're wrong. The head of my department depends on me absolutely. Often he'll come round my office saying, Put down your work, old man. Come out for a bite. I go, of course. There are clerks even junior to me who can hold the fort while I am away. But all of you, why why are you standing? Please, sit down. I don't like being made too much of a fuss of. It embarrasses me. Buzz starts whenever I go anywhere. Can't always help it. Will you look who it is? John Alexander Listakov himself. Woman, stand on cheers. Do you know, one night, I was mistaken for the commander-in-chief of the army. Old Imperial Guard turned out to salute me. Two field marshals in their dressing gowns. Oh, how thrilling <laughs> for you. <clears throat> in Moscow, we take these things in our stride. Field marshals one minute, famous actresses the next. Ooh, actresses. The prettiest, most lovable actresses of them all. I write plays, you see. They all want to know I have a part for them. Oh, you write plays. It must be so exciting to be famous. I'm too busy writing to enjoy it half the time. Publishers always queuing up for me to write for them. The Marriage of Figaro. Young Mozart did the music for that, you may remember. <laughs> Fidelio, we used Beethoven for that. The Saint Matthew Passion. I could go on and on and on. And the books I've published, they sell by the thousands. Oh, I wish I could read one. Books and plays, they are my life. And my house, you should see my house. It's one of the sights of Moscow. That's where John Alexander Lestikov lives, they tell strangers. I get hardly any privacy. But come round, whenever you are a Moscow gentleman, the parties I throw, fabulous, and my balls. Oh, I wish I could see you. The money I spend on them, you wouldn't believe. Smoked salmon from Scotland, soup straight from Paris, watermelons from, well, wherever watermelons come from. (laughs) (laughs) When we're tired of dancing, We make up a table at cards. The Minister of Foreign Affairs. The English Ambassador. The French Ambassador. The American Ambassador. And I, when the ball is over, I walk up to my little room on the fifth floor and I call for my cook. Oh, I say how I like that. Me, John Alexander Listikov, living on the fifth floor. I live in the staterooms on the first floor, of course. My staircase, gold, worth millions. 
and my front door carved from ivory, set with rubies, sapphires, and other precious stones, besieged every morning by princes of the blood royal and cabinet ministers, all begging a few words with me, while I, in my state beard, while I lie in my state beard, and, and, and in my silk sheets I, I, I open my letters, 50,000 letters, all marked, Your Excellency. I had a ministry of my own once. Funny how it happened. Minister went away, disappeared, never came back. Nobody ever found out what happened to him. Plenty of people wanted this job too. Tried it, all made a mess of it. They had it with brains. So, hundreds of messengers came rushing to my front door. Come, be our minister, Mr. Listikov. You are just the man for the post. <laughs> and am I the right person, I wondered. And I nearly turned the job down. But then I thought, no. John Alexander Listikov, you have your career to think of. What would the Emperor say if he knew that you, John Alexander, had let the royal family down? So I took that job. But now, gentlemen, you had better watch your stick. And I kept my word. I went through that ministry like an avenging angel. I pulverised them, all right. I put the fear of God into them. I put the fear of God right into the Privy Council too. That's the way I'm made. Once I get a job, I see it through, right to the bitter end. I'll clean up this palace if I see any corrupt corruption going on in here. Oh, every day I go to the palace for lunch, making me the Prime Minister tomorrow. Yo, yo, yo. Yo, yo. What do you want? Your ex, your ex, ex. Your trunk, lady. Your trunk. Your excellency, your room is ready for you. Warm, clean, and comfortable. Wouldn't you like a little bye-byes? Bye-byes? Nonsense. Why would I want to go bye bye <laughs> oh. oh, all right. I could go bye bye. Uh, splendid lunch, gentlemen. Splendid. Top marks for the lunch. Splendid. <laughs> Psst! You there. Don't let anyone into this house without written permission from me. Do you understand? We'll have all the worst rogues in town coming around with complaints against us if we don't watch out. Anthony, why aren't you dressed yet? Don't you know what time it is? You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Hush, dearest. The government inspector is still sleeping. We don't want to wake him up, do we? Oh, I don't see what there is to be frightened of. I find him charming. Quite charming. I think he's attractive too. Oh, so mm. elegant and courteous. We warm to each other at once. Yes, but... Uh, was he telling the truth, though? All that taradiddle about playing cards with ambassadors and going to the palace every day. Was he making it up to put us off the scent? Oh, one never knows where one stands with these people. Uh, your, uh, your master, is he uh, still sleeping? Oh, sleeping like a baby. And you are? Uh, Joseph, ma'am. And uh, are you being well looked after, Joseph? Nicely, thank you, sir. Tell us about your master, Joseph. Does he really mix with lords and ladies in Moscow? Oh yes, ma'am. Very grand he is. And good looking too. But, uh, <laughs> but what sort of a man is our guest? Is he very <laughs> severe, for instance? Oh, severe? Well, he does like everything to be just right. It gets a bit hot if they're not. Oh, and what kind of uniform does he wear in Moscow? You can leave that out for a start. When he's here and in the country like this, what is he looking for chiefly? Well, he's looking for good food and drink before anything else. <laughs> Always asks me, are you being treated, Papa Joseph? 
And if I say no, he pays them out for me, he does. <laughs> <laughs> Very helpful, Joseph. Very helpful. Here's uh, a little something to put in your glass later. Thank you, sir. I shall drink your good health and prosperity, I shall. Come, Maria, with many things to see to before the government inspector wakes up. And uh, here's a little something for your pockets, too. If there's anything you require, Joseph, don't hesitate to ask for it. <laughs> oh, gentlemen, you're early. We have come to pay our respects to the government inspector from Moscow. Uh, Is he up yet? Uh, oh. I mean, government inspector appears to be waking up. Uh, I must go and get dressed, uh, gentlemen. Director, look after the place, will you? And make sure your departments are cleaned up and ready for inspection. <laughs> right, better form a straight line. Tallest on the right, shortest on the left. Bobsky, you on one end. Bobsky, you on the other. <laughs> Perhaps try a bit of the usual. <laughs> bit risky, isn't it? Trying to bribe a government inspector. <laughs> well, just pretend it's some a subscription to some charity, perhaps. That'll do it. Hmm. Better see them one by one then. Make sure there are no witnesses. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Joseph! My head! My head! I haven't had such a hangover in years. Bit of wine we had last night. Must have had a real punch. Do you know? I think I'm starting to enjoy myself here. Oh, they're certainly looking after us all right for some reason. Can't see why, ain't it? They haven't met any important people from Moscow before. <laughs> That's why they've been so kind. I like the daughter. She's a poppet. <laughs> and the mother? I think she's ready for anything. <laughs> oh yes. We've got it made. Oops. Allow me to introduce myself. I am the magistrate of the local court. Ah, yes. Delighted to see you. So you are the magistrate. Tell me, does the job pay well? <laughs> Excuse me. You've uh, <coughs> dropped something. It's money. No, 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 no it, it's not money. Uh, yes, it is. No, no, it's not money. <laughs> yes, yes, it is. Uh, take it, please, Excellency, take it. It's of no use to me. Well, it's very kind of you, sir. I must say, I could do with it as a matter of fact. I lost a lot of money on the way here, you see. <laughs> I'll uh, pay you back every penny as soon as I reach my country state. Please, I wouldn't hear of such a thing. It gives me great pleasure to be of some use. Keep it, please, Excellency, keep it. I, I won't trouble your Excellency any further unless your Grace has a special instruction from Moscow for me. Special instruction from Moscow? No, no, I can't think of any special instructions. Oh, that's all right then. <laughs> <laughs> Allow me to introduce myself. I am the superintendent of schools. Ah, uh, good morning. Delighted to meet you. Do, take a chair. So, you are the superintendent, you say? Yes. Well, will you have a cigar, oh, then? Please, you. take it. They're not as good as the ones I smoke in Moscow, but they're a bit of an rolled up turnip leaves for a morning puff. <laughs> You've uh, gone put the wrong end in your mouth, oh. old chap. Ah, yes, cigars and women. Where would we be without them? Tell me, what kind of woman do you like best, Mr. Superintendent of Schools? Tall ones, short ones, blondes, woman with dark brown eyes. Hello, hello. <laughs> Who's blushing? Who's going to read? There's nothing to be embarrassed about. We all have our little secrets. Oh, heavens, why did I have to give myself away to you? Well, if uh, you can manage a small loan, perhaps, to help me out of a temporary financial difficulty. I don't need much. Only a few hundred. <laughs> oh, heavens, what have I let myself in for? Look, here. 
take my wallet, don't even think of paying me back. I'm delighted to be of service. Delighted to be of service. How very peculiar everyone here seems to be frightened of me. I wonder why. I have the honour of reminding you, sir, I'm the director of social services in this town. You had lunch with me yesterday. Ah, yes, of... and a very good meal that was, too. Please, take a chair. I do hope our superintendent wasn't bothering you, sir. He's not worth wasting time on. He's a terrible influence on the children. And the magistrates know better. The man here before the superintendent. He spent all his day hunting, he does, when he ought to be in court doing his job. The rogues we have in our town. There's one man, sir, Boris Dobsky. Whenever Boris goes out, the magistrate walks over to see his wife. None of the Boris children look like Boris. <laughs> <laughs> you are too surprised me, director. And the postmaster. He's so inefficient. Let us get delayed for days. I say, would you like me to write down a list of all the bad people in our town, sir? What they've been up to? Oh, that would make for very amusing reading. Yes, yes, please. But there's uh, one other way in which you could help me out with. You see, I happen to be a little short of money at the moment. You could lend me a few of the needful. I don't need much. A few hundred? <laughs> thank you, thank you. I'm so very grateful to you. Now, who's next to see me? <laughs> Petrovsky and Petrovsky, sir, landowners of this town. We met yesterday at the inn, you may remember. Ah, uh, yes, and you fell on your nose. <laughs> Have you any money? Money, Your Honour? I want to borrow every penny you've got on me. Oh, my money, sir. My money is all in the bank. <laughs> my too, Your Honour. Oh, I'm sure you've got something in your pockets. Come on, empty them out. <laughs> <laughs> Now, what do you want to see me about? Sensitive little matter concerning my eldest son, sir. Sensitive little chap, spitting image of his father. But, well, to put it in a nutshell, his father and I, we, we weren't in, exactly, in a manner of speaking, we weren't exactly married when our eldest son was born. If you could do anything, sir, to put it right in Moscow. And, and your worries? <laughs> oh, I have no worries, sir. I just have one teeny tiny request you make. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> when you're with the royal family in the palace in Moscow, so please mention my name occasionally. Um, he was a fine fellow I met when I was on tour in the country, so please tell them her name is Petra Bobsky. She's a splendid person. Can you remember that special You have tree, only sir? to ask and oh, your wishes are granted. Thank you, sir. <laughs> <coughs> My apologies for having intruded upon you. What a funny crowd they are here. They all seem to think that I am someone quite high up in the government or something. <laughs> what a joke. I'll write to Tilliski about it. He has a great sense of fun. Joseph! Go get me a pen, some paper, and drink. Joseph. It's a... Uh, Brought in some money, though. Thousands, I reckon. They wouldn't have handed all of us over if they hadn't been nearly scared out of their wits. Ah, thank you, Joseph. <coughs> We've had a good morning, no? We've been here long enough, if you ask me. Time we moved on. Move on? <laughs> Nonsense. Never been better placed in the whole of my life. Move on tomorrow, perhaps. Tomorrow may be too late. They think you're somebody else. Haven't you got the common sense to see that? Dear Tedeschi, I've been having a right old time, having a right here without any money, after being cleaned out in 15 minutes by an army officer who was cheating. Let's on move on, I say. The luck's still going with us. Let's hide the fastest horses and the best carriage we can find and get back to your old man's place. Once this lot find out they've been conned, and all of the townspeople have been shoving money into my pockets as hard as they can. The mayor here, he's as thick as a plank. <laughs> <laughs> there, send this to
to, to, to ski, don't pay anything, tell them it goes free on government service. I've uh, forgotten Tiniski's address though. He flits about so often when he can't pay for rent. Don't worry, he'll find him. Just address it to Post Office Street in Moscow. You can't see him, clear off. Let me in. I have the right to see him. It's agent. If you don't take yourself off, you'll find yourself in the prison. What's this for matter over there, Joseph? The shopkeeper wants to talk to you or something. The constable's keeping her away. What is the problem, my friends? My lord, I have a petition for you. This man will not allow me to present it to you. Go to help constable to let one of them in. Let one of them in. We look to you for, for protection, my lord. We, the tradespeople of this town, look to you for protection. Protection? From whom? From the mayor, my lord. He's bleeding us white. He comes into our shops and takes anything he fancies. He doesn't even dream of paying. We give him the best present at Christmas, like any other mayor expects. But this particular mayor is not happy with it. And you know, he comes into our shops and orders the best wine, the best food, and the most expensive clothes. Send them over to my house, it's my birthday. And you know what? It's a waste of time sending him a bill. He'll never pay for it. Oh, the man's a rogue. And if we complain, he billed soldiers upon us, and you know how much soldiers eat. I'm not supposed to have you whipped or tortured. I'm not supposed to do that. But you know what he does? He sends us into prison where he feeds us with dry, rotten fish until we're almost dying of thirst. Oh, the villain. <laughs> if you do something about him, sir, we, the church people of this town, you are only hope. <laughs> Would like you to accept a little present with our royal greetings. Oh, um, that's very kind of you, but uh, I'm not allowed to accept bribes. Uh. There's uh, nothing in the rule book about accepting loans, though. If you could lend me some money. Oh, 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 that's not a problem. I'll go around with a hat to all shopkeepers. I know they'll be happy to chip in every little bit they have. I won't miss out anyone. I promise you, everybody, I won't miss out anyone. <laughs> May I come in, sir? Yes, what is the matter? It's the mayor, sir. Curse his boots and his father's boots and his grandfather's boots and his great grandfather's boots. Again, what has he taken off of you this time? <laughs> I'll tell you, sir. He's had me whipped and all over nothing, sir. There's a bit of a fight in the marketplace. The police was hours getting there, as usual. And then they took off the wrong person. Me, I had nothing to do with it, but the man wouldn't listen. Flog her, they said. And my, how they let it on. I couldn't sit down for three days. What do you want me to do about it? I can't get you unflogged, can I? You can, can sir. I? You can. Find them, sir. Find them heavy. The money will come in handy in such hard times as these. Oh, right. Now, that is a very bright idea. You can uh, safely leave it in my hands. Oh, thank you, sir. Oh, thank you. Here. Hold this for me. I'll uh, read it later. I promise you. <laughs> oh. Oh. oh, don't be frightened of me, dear. I'm not a wolf. I wasn't really frightened. No need to be at all. Where are you off to? I'm not really off to anywhere. I thought my mother was in here with you. I'm sorry if I've interrupted you, sir. Oh, you have interrupted nothing. Nothing of any importance, at least. Uh, if you would take a chair. I really ought not to stay. What a delightful necklace you are wearing. I really ought not to. What a lucky necklace to be on such a sweet little neck. Really? Hasn't the weather been changing all this morning? Oh, no seeing you, I haven't really noticed the weather. <laughs> really? The things you say. Will you write something in my autograph album? Yes, what would you like me to write? Uh, some of your verses, perhaps? I've written so many. Love is like a red, red rose that, that, oh, for the moment I forget how it goes. How do you fancy that? But I would much rather offer you my love than any verse. Your love? I love my sweet. Why are you moving away from me? <laughs> Why, because I have to be near to talk? 
talk, my dearest. I just want to hold you in my arms. Mm -hmm. Whoever said you could do that? Just because I'm an innocent country girl. Dear, don't be cross with me. I've longed for you. So, forgive me, dear heart, on my knees. What is say this? You not cross. <laughs> oh, agony. <laughs> <laughs> what have I done to deserve this? Mama, do not think badly of me. Go to your room at once, you abandoned thing, and stay there until I send for you. <laughs> She's stunning, madame. I'm dizzy with love. That is why I forget myself. How, in the presence of such beauty, can a normal man control his ardour? Oh, please, sir, get off your knees. That you, a gentleman like you, shouldn't kneel on our dusty floor. No! Here on this dirty, dusty floor, I beg and beseech you. Am I to be the happiest man in the world, or am I to die in the agonies of hell? Uh, wh wh what do you mean? Do you mean you want to marry my daughter? No, <laughs> it is you that I want. Me? With you by my side, <laughs> and walk in the clouds. <coughs> marry me, I beg you. Marry me. But I happen to be married already. <laughs> well, that needs not stop you. What is a mere ceremony when love is involved? Let us fly away together to some quiet country estate. My father's, perhaps. There, quite away from the world. We can gaze into each other's eyes and... And? And what fun, my darling, we shall have. Oh. Oh. What's wrong with you? Stop hanging like a child. Grow up, won't you? But, Mama... Now is no time for crying, my sweetest. Now is the time for joy, for celebration. Give us your blessing, Mother dear. But, do you mean you want her? I die if I do not have her. Do you want me to live or die? Oh, I fixed this for you, child, and don't you forget it. He went on his knees for me. Your Highness, Your Highness, spare me, Your Highness. Spare you? From what? The tradespeople, Your Highness, the complaints against me, it's lies, all lies. They're cheats and rogues. And the sergeant's wife, we never flogged her, she flogged herself. It's all <laughs> lies. Uh, uh, Anthony, His Highness has got other things on his mind at the moment. His Highness has done our family a great honour. His Highness has asked our daughter to marry him. Hey, my wife's gone crazy now. Don't listen to her. It's madness, I tell you. Hereditary. Her mother was like it before her. <laughs> Your wife's not mad. I love the girl. I want to marry her. This cannot happen. It has happened. If you will not make her my wife, I will not answer for the consequences. Uh, you, see, you see, he means what he says. Perhaps you uh, don't want me in your family, eh? Is that why you say it cannot happen? If that be so, tell me honestly, and I'll put myself out of my misery. <sighs> your Highness, what am I to say? If this really is true, I will be the happiest man alive. Now give him the Father's blessing. Uh, may God bless you and keep you. At least I won't be expected to keep you. Oh, what's this? <laughs> They're kissing already. What a splendid son-in-law. Oh, three cheers for the mayor, eh? Three cheers for the mayor. Carriage is ready. Good. I'll be with you in a minute, Joseph. Uh, uh, but surely, Your Highness, you're... You're not leaving us. Yes, I'm on my way. Uh, but, but didn't you say just, just a moment ago something about uh, getting married? <laughs> getting married? No, I don't. Oh, yes, getting married. Oh, yes. Um. Well, you see, uh, my uncle, he's very... Uh, my father is uh, very rich. He'll uh, cut me out of... He'll cut us out of his will if I neglect him. I get the point exactly, sir. I'll be back tomorrow. We will be looking forward to that. Goodbye, my pet, till I return. Uh, but, uh, are you sure you've got everything you require for the journey? Enough, um, money, for instance. <laughs> I guess you have given me, uh, lent me, 200, or I mean 400 of the best exactly. Shall we say another 400? Make it a nice round figure. A thousand. Um, there's more than a thousand there, sir. Don't bother to count it. 
Thank you. Thank you. What a charitable town. Goodbye. Uh, good goodbye. goodbye. Uh, see you tomorrow. Or the day after, perhaps. Goodbye. Goodbye. It's like a dream, my dearest. I keep thinking that I'm going to wake up. One minute, I am the mayor, and you're the mayoress of a quiet country town, and the next, we have in our family one of the grandest and most important men in the land. <laughs> you may be surprised, but I've always known we were above the rest around here. <laughs> Clods and bumpkins. Now you're just finding out how right I've been. A cut above the rest. By golly, you are right. We are a cut above the rest. And the rest will see it now. We'll show them. We'll show them. Uh, you there, Constable on duty. Come in here a minute. Uh, complain about me indeed. How did they have the nerve? I'll rub their nasty little faces in the dirt. Um, I want a list made. Uh, of all the jumped up little tradespeople that have anything to do with, uh, with a complaint to the government inspector about me. Uh, uh, we'll show them. They won't have a square inch of skin left on their backs once we're finished with them. We'll use the ropes with knots in them. Related by marriage to the grandest in the land. And you better warn anyone else who might feel like trying it on, what they bring upon themselves. And, uh, and get the church bells ringing too. This town has something to celebrate. By golly it does. Well, what are you waiting for? We'll show them. We'll show them. You won't want to spend much time around here with trash like this once we move to Moscow, will you, my dearest? Will this be our country home? Ooh. Could you bear it? <laughs> well, you won't want to carry on being mayor here. A mayor? A mayor country mayor? Here? The very idea. When I shall have all the grand Moscow jobs to choose from. Oh. <laughs> With your son having uh, lunch with the emperor every day, the very idea. What are you going to do? A high job in the army, do you think? Or uh, the treasury, perhaps? I could be a general, yes. I, I would like that. Uh, or a field marshal, perhaps. The higher you are, the better they treat you, you know. <laughs> Even a mayor has to stand up in the presence of a field marshal. Imagine that. The mayor of this place having to... Remain standing while I sit down in comfort. Well, you will have to watch what you say, though, my dear. You come out with some very coarse remarks at times, positively rude. I may have a lively tongue, but a few coarse words never hurt anybody. You'll get away with it down here because they're just a bunch of ignorant pigs. But in Moscow, with the gentlefolk, it'll be different. But, Mama, isn't it I, Maria, who's going to be married? Not you. You? What's this got to do with you? Huh. Your father and I are quite <laughs> capable of arranging our own <coughs> affairs without your assistance. <laughs> but, Mama... Hush, child. Your father and I will be living in one of the grandest and prettiest houses in Moscow. You will have nothing to worry about. I will light pine logs in every grate. The smell is so enticing. We've got her, sir. We've got her. Got who? Look, shop people, your worship. What's been collecting money against you? Well, bring her in. Bring her in. We'll start with this one, and then we'll roast the lot of them. Yes. <laughs> Come on, then. There she is, sir. The glory of the yes. morning with you, sir. Yes, and good morning to you, too, my good lady. Uh, thriving, are you, uh, I expect? Running around town full of energy? Organising complaints against me? That's right, you rogue, you crook. You thought that I didn't know what you have been up to. But uh, you thought you were going to get me thrown in prison. But uh, that's where you've made the biggest mistake of your life. It's you who's going to be behind bars. You lying, cheating, short-change giving, adulterating uh, tea hog. Uh, uh, mind your language, dear. Remember Moscow. And there's no one left for you to run to. That government inspector you complain to. He's my son. My son. Well, almost. <laughs> now how do you feel? Oh, spare me, my lord, spare me. If you take me to prison, I will, but ruined. <laughs> yes, I will spare you, but only because I am the happiest man alive. Now, get back to your shop and get me a wedding present. I want a really good one too. I don't want no cheap hey, man, piece hey, of... Man. 
just heard the news. Is it really true? It's almost unbelievable. Yes, it's, it's true. It's true. About you, Anna. A remarkable achievement. <laughs> <laughs> I've come to congratulate you on the great distinction that has been conferred on you. It is a great, great credit to our town. And its first lady is to shine more brightly than ever. And you, young lady, a kiss. You are such a lucky child to have such an attractive and clever mama. Congratulations, your worship. Congratulations. May I too have the honour? Perhaps we will be invited to visit your son-in-law. Go to the palace, even. Have lunch with the emperor. See his gold plate. My dear Mia. My dear Mia. Yes. My dear Miris, how can I express the joy? The joy that's in my heart. <laughs> can you tell us how this happened? It is all so sudden and so exciting. It is exciting, yes. To have so great a man make so great a proposal at uh, first hand, as it were. And he popped the question with such charm and such grace. <laughs> I have such admiration for you, he said to me. But mama. Oh, hush, child. Oh, he was so <laughs> flattering and passionate. <laughs> and at the end, when he said, if the answer is no, I will do away with myself. Oh, I could have fainted. Who could have foreseen <laughs> such an incredible piece of luck? <laughs> There's no luck about it. You and your wife have earned your true award for your worth. And all the hard work you've done. Mm. It's always a fuddish thing. They're going to snout spurs in the front. <laughs> but your eminent guest, your worship, um, where is he? Our uh, eminent guest, as you so rightly call him, Mr. Superintendent, our eminent guest has uh, sadly had to deprive us of his company for just a few hours. He has had to rush off on official government business. An he engagement such as this must be officially sanctioned, you understand? He has gone to get the blessing of a very eminent person on our match, Superintendent. You see, in the highest of circles, that is the dumb thing. But he will be back tomorrow morning at the very latest. When the mayor and I will be uh, making a journey to Moscow to meet our new friends and relatives at the palace and beyond. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hush, child. <laughs> this town has served us well for what it is, but we will be living in Moscow from now on. This town is really rather squalid and corrupt. <laughs> We ought to have it officially inspected and brought up to the market. <laughs> With you, sir, and you, madam, at the highest levels in Moscow, could we, out here in the country, hope for a little personal assistance? My, my son, for instance, I was thinking of taking, bringing him to Moscow to see if there might be a position, however junior, in, in the civil service. If, perchance, you could see a way to assisting him in his career. I'm sure that uh, I will always uh, be able to do whatever I can up in Moscow on behalf of my former friends and acquaintances who are unfortunate enough to remain in the country. <laughs> now watch what you say, my dear, otherwise you'll have every jumped up little nobody running up to the city after you if you're not careful. So that's what she thinks of us. <laughs> it's always been to be for Mr. Mayor, everybody! I have some terrible news. Terrible news? What is it? Well, you know how I'd never dream of opening any letter in my care, would you? <laughs> well, I just noticed a letter from the town government inspector were paid with us. Go on, go on. Well, it was addressed to Mr. Tatursky, uh, Post Office Street, uh, Moscow, and I thought... <laughs> that letter is about our postal service here. That bully letter's about me, so I'd uh, better open it and I'll see what it had to say. Open the government inspector's own letter? You'd never dare. I did. <laughs> Wouldn't dream of it, but one side of me was saying, go on, do your duty, send it off to Moscow, just as it is. The other half of me was saying, well, you'd be ruined, my lad, if it ever reached Moscow, so I uh, broke the seals. How dare you interfere with the mail of such an important person? That's the thing. He isn't an important person. What? what? He isn't a government inspector at all. What are you saying that, that that he... Well, since you seem to know more about it than we do, why don't you tell us? No important as far as I can tell. How dare you? I arrest you in the name of the law. You couldn't if you tried. He's going to marry my wife... Uh, my daughter, rather. <laughs> I'll have you sent to Siberia. Wait! To see what he has to say if we get some boo about sending anyone off to Moscow. Oh, Siberia. Mm. My dear Tatiski, I hope you're well, and not too deeply in debt again. I'm having a right old time, I must tell you. 
We arrived here without any money, having been cleaned out in 15 minutes by an army officer. Who was cheating? I'm sure he was. My servant and I were literally starving, and the innkeeper was all for having us put in the lockup. It was a desperate situation. All of a sudden, the local inhabitants seem to have got this idea in their head that I'm an important official from Moscow. Now I'm living in the mayor's house in the greatest comfort and style. And I'm messing about with his wife. What? <laughs> and his daughter. Oh. <laughs> It'll be the old mum, I think. <laughs> She's well past her prime, but oh, thoroughly steamed up. <laughs> The townspeople are pushing money into my hand, uh, into my pockets as hard as they can. They're pleasant lunatics, most of them. And the mayor's as thick as a plank. <laughs> You're pulling out there. You're making this up as you go along. And see for yourself then. The mayor is as thick as a plank and greedy as a... You wrote this yourself. Give it... How could I? <clears throat> Excuse me. The mayor is as thick as a plank and as greedy as a prize boar. Oh, the, post the postmaster. Yes, well, he's being quite rude here. Go on, go on. It's all of it or none of it. Shan't! If you won't, I will. Hey. Oh, no. <laughs> the postmaster smells as if he drinks brandy all day. The road wants a good hiding. Oh, the director of social services. The next few lines are legible. Oh, no, they're not. <laughs> Uh, let's see if I can read it, shall I? <laughs> oh, the Director of Social Services looks like a pig in a skirt. And the Superintendent of Education. Well, oh, no. Go on. No, 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 no. no. Superintendent of Education smells of garlic. His teeth are as black as the... Oh no, this, this is the work of the devil. Oh, I'll get those ruddy church bells stopped at once. The assassin, the murderer. How will we ever live this down? Somebody chase him down and bring him back here. I will tear him limb from limb with my own hands. <clears throat> That's the last we'll ever see of him. I'll vouch for that. And he's got my money too. Oh, oh mine. Hey, mine. I have all we got. Well, dear friends, we've made fools of ourselves. That's all there is to it. But how could I have been such an idiot? I've been in the civil service for 30 years. I've never been taken in like this before. I always thought I could out-trick any rogue. <laughs> and to think that our daughter wanted to marry him. Marry him? <laughs> marry him? Even my own daughter was taken in by his charms. Oh... Did you ever see such a lot? What rubbish! And now, he'll go back to Moscow and he'll tell everyone all about us and he won't leave out a thing. And some little snake of an author will hear all about it and he'll write a play about us. And he won't spare any details and how the world is going to laugh at us until the end of time. Well, what are you lot laughing at? <laughs> you're not so different from the rest of us, you know. Perhaps, perhaps you're laughing at yourselves. <laughs> oh, but how did we come to be so taken in? What first put this idea of a government inspector in our heads and had us running round yelling out, Inspector, Inspector? Yeah, well, someone saw a letter, if you remember. <laughs> you called us in here to hear about it. Uh, but, but I never said anyone at the end was a government inspector, did I? Then who did? Who did? Who, who did? did? Who, who was did? it? Don't mean, please. Don't oh, me. me either. I only thought... <laughs> and then these two little know-nothings came running in from the inn. <laughs> the inspector's arrived, they said. He's at the inn. He doesn't have to pay for anything, they said. It must be him. I remember it clearly. Just what you'd expect. It was all started by the town's two biggest mischief-makers. Well, I think they deserve it. Damn good hiding. Touch the ball. Your worship. Your worship. His Excellency, the Inspector General, appointed by orders of His Imperial Majesty, has arrived at this town from Moscow. His Excellency is in temporary residence at the inn. His Excellency intends to start his investigations into the affairs of his town. Without delay, you are to present yourselves to His Excellency at once. Oh, I 
I've heard this before. Charge! 